death by die. Welcome to another episode of Death by Die, and today we're going to be doing a top five. So this is all about us orcs. We is the best. We is green and mean. And you are a baloney, so better sit there and listen. The first one. So the thing I love most about rules is when they convey a lot of the narrative of the game. And one of the things I always remember about orcs growing up was that they used to stick a lot of the Grot and Gretchen in front of them to soak up fire. Well, it just so happens that there's a stratagem called Grot Shields. And I think this conveys it fantastically. Basically, you can use a stratagem after an infantry unit from your army, excluding units comprised entirely of Gretchen, has been hit by a ranged weapon. Until the end of this phase, you can roll a d6 each time a model from that unit loses a wound if there's a friendly unit comprised entirely of clan Gretchen infantry models within 6 inches of it. And the Gretchen unit is closer to the attacking model than the target. On a 2-up, the original model does not lose the wound, but one model in the Gretchen unit of your choice is slain. Otherwise, the model loses the wound at normal. So yeah, you get to use Grotz as meat shields again. That is good. The next one. So on to number two. One of the other things I love about Games Workshop products is the artwork is just outstanding. There were so many talented artists. And this piece is Bad Moons versus Blood Angels. And it's just an epic battle going on. There's crash things about. There's people flying in the air. There's Thunderhawk gunships. You've got Mega Knobs, Killer Cans. There's a Predator. There's loads of Marines dying and killing. There's a Titan in the background you can see striding across and then even higher up. Uh, you can just about make it out. There's a Warlord Titan as well and it just looks incredibly epic. I actually played a game yesterday using the Bad Moon Culture um, against a Blood Angels army. And just looking at this artwork I just want to play more games of that. I want to get my army painted. And that for me is something that's really good about artwork because it inspires you to want to get your models painted. Because when you can try and recreate battles like this on the table, that's, that's where you're winning at tabletop gaming. The other one. So along with artwork that inspires me to want to build and paint models, the narrative is, for me, the main driving force of 40k. If it wasn't for any of the story, then the models wouldn't really make that much sense at times. And there's this little bit of text when it kind of catches you up. Uh, this is in the Age of the Orc. And this is called an enticing prize. Mad Duck Grotznik leads a warband of pain boys, cyborgs, and specially modified killer cans in an attack upon an isolated strike cruiser of the Silver Templars chapter. He seizes a number of Primaris Space Marines alive, though what the deranged orc intends to do with his captives is best not imagined. Now that is just like, that's a campaign right there. You can have kill team, you know, trying to get like some information about the strike cruiser where you've got to strike it you could even come up with a little mini game about how to do that i mean if you've got the old um battle for the gothic you could even recreate that kind of battle of trying to board it uh there's a lot of zone mortalis things you could do with that you know fighting down corridors you could even use the necromunda boards if you want to keep the price down which i would probably do if i was going to do something like this but then there's the modeling uh capabilities as well it's like what is he using this primary stuff for is he trying to create even bigger orcs. Uh, imagine like knobs that are like 50% bigger than what they are, like Primaris Arctic Space Marines. There's so much going on. I mean, there's some other texts in here as well where they go off fighting against Tau. Um, Nazdreg has heard of the Storm Surge Artillery Walker and is intent on building one into a Stomper. I want to see one of those built, please, someone. And the other one is Death Skulls go into a Necron tomb and they accidentally trigger a reanimation protocol. And by the time the Necron Lord wakes up, there's a bunch of mech boys standing over his sarcophagus. Evil gleams in their eyes and revving power tools in their hands. Ha 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 ha, I mean, Necron constructs that are orcified would look amazing anyway, so... There's just so many modelling capabilities out there, and this just helps to inspire people to do it, and I can't wait to see some of this. Da, another one. This next thing from the Codex that I absolutely love is... Well, probably the simplest thing that has changed from the index to this. And that is what was once was a stratagem called Daka 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 is now just a, a race thing for orcs. So every time you hit with a six that's unmodified, you generate extra shots. That's so damn cool. I mean, Daka 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 is what the orcs are all about. They love loud noises. They like try to kill things. They can, generally can't hit things, but they will have a go until they get into combat and then they'll just smack them with their guns. But having this gone from a one-point stratagem to an army-wide rule for everyone all the time 
it probably doesn't make a huge amount of change. You still gotta roll a six and then get a five or a six to hit with most things, but if you've got like bad ones rerolling ones or death skulls that can re-roll a dice, that it it just helps and it feels like an orc thing to do that you might fire two rockets. You might miss with one of them, but if you roll a six, you might hit with another one and be like, well, I missed a rocket, but then three, another one come out, like, backfiring or whatever. That's so fun, and it's it's really cool to actually do in the game as well. Two zogging many. So, the last thing that I really enjoyed in this codex, as you'll notice, there's probably not a lot of rules things, but this is going back to the narrative, and it's a little part in the Greenskin expansion section where there's the large map, and it shows where the warp is um, in relation to where all the planets are. And it is the six-part entry on there. Vague tidings suggest that a self-proclaimed Grand Warlord has placed his greenskin hordes on a collision course with War Borg. Perhaps this will give neighbouring Imperial worlds time to bolster their defences. Now, a lot of people will probably read that and think, oh, that's a really simple thing, it's just some orc called the Grand Warlord. But back in the day when I got into 40k, that was back in 2nd edition in 1994-95, uh, there was a guy who used to work for White Dwarf called Adrian Wood, and he was known as the Grand Warlord. And I think he helped a lot with how the orcs kind of slowly themed, because back then, orcs would hit the same as Imperial Guard. Uh, they had Ballistic Skill, Weapon Skill 3, which, going against the narrative, you know, they always said that orcs can barely hit a barn door from 50 feet away or whatever. They had the same Ballistic Skill as an Imperial Guard, and it didn't make sense. And I remember there was a rule change when they did the battle. It was based on the, the Zulu fight. And Adrian Wood used his orc army. And he made his orcs more feral looking. And I think there was a rule change because of that. So I think partly because of the way Adrian Wood modelled the one army. That helped to bring the rules to what was much better for orcs. You know, you should be hitting pretty good in combat. Because that's what they're always meant to do. They never really seemed that powerful before. But yeah, the, the change was so big, and I thought it was a really cool little reference to someone who plays a large part. Because uh, one of the other things as well is I think he helped with the old Orc Dreadnought look. He used, I think it was the bottom of some support weapons from like the old Lobber and things like that. And he just made some really cool looking Dreadnoughts out of some random bits. And that was one of the first times I saw things like that, like huge conversions, especially with vehicles. Used to get these really like um, cool clean cut like space marine conversions. I remember Mike McVeigh, there's a name from the past, um, in a white dwarf where he made the Blood Angels captain from the second edition box art, which later became out as a limited edition model uh, about six or seven years ago, I believe, in a games day. And I remember seeing him, how he cut it, how he modeled extra things on there. And it was cool to see that, but it was so awesome to see tanks that were customised and smashed apart and rebuilt as something different and the Dreadnoughts always stand out to me as being quite iconic, especially from that era. So thanks for watching, I hope you all enjoyed it. What did you guys enjoy about the Orc Codex? Was there any rules that you really like using? I know there's a lot of deadly combinations, but uh, I'm not the most competitive of players. I quite like the fun aspect of it and recreating stories and having, you know, just a laugh. But what did you find about the Codex that you really enjoyed? Uh, let me know below, and if you want to like this video and subscribe to the channel, that would be amazing! But there's no obligation to do so. So thank you very much, and I will catch you guys soon.